Ben McKee, VolQuest.com here with Tony Vitello after Tennessee's pretty big win over Mississippi State in game one in Starkville. Tony, 27 runs, second highest in program history in a conference game. Just what's going through your mind when, when you all are pouring it on like that? Well, um, you're, you're trying to win, you, you know, and obviously you're trying to win the game, but there's nine innings in a game, so you're trying to win situations. You want to select the right guys to come in the game, maybe even select the right guys to come out of the game and make sure guys are still, you know, playing winning baseball. And if they're doing that, then we're, we're gifted with some guys. we got enough talent. The scoreboard will take care of itself. Uh, but tonight with the guys kind of coming out of the gates as they did in the first inning, um, they made it a little easier, or obviously a little more tension-free in the dugout to think about those things and make those decisions. You mentioned the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back home runs in the first inning. Just what did you see in, in that moment and throughout the game that the guys were doing so well at the plate that led to success? Yeah, ball was jumping, and if, if you look at the way they did it, I mean, Jordan battled with two strikes. Luke went complete backside or opposite side of the field, and then Drew stayed on an off-speed pitch, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, Drew's got tremendous hand speed. Sometimes... You know, that can work to your disadvantage, but he stayed to the ball so well, lifted an off-speed pitch just over the fence. So each one of those kind of came in fashion where it's not like it was a, you know, 3-0 count. We green-lighted a guy and he sold out to a fastball. They were all, you know, quality at-bats that were taking place, and fortunately they got good results out of them. Before I ask you about Chase's performance tonight, what, was, what went into your decision to start Chase game one and then you're going to go back to the freshman to, to round out the weekend? I, I think just basing it off last week. I mean, nothing more complicated than that. He started the first game last week, and, and he'll be able to stay in his routine. And, you know, these guys need to understand this time of year, you don't get to stay in your routine. I mean, heck, just in an NCAA game or, or a game in Hoover, you, you know, you don't have the lengthy pregame stuff. You only get a certain amount of time, certain amount of guys in the dugout. So you've got to be willing to adjust at all times. And, um, you know, I think our guys did that. And then Chase Dolander doesn't give up a hit. <laughs> Over, I believe it was six innings. Uh, obviously, yeah. it, it had to sit there for a while. Just how difficult of a decision was that? It was hard. He wanted to stay in the game, and then he almost took too long getting a guy ready. Christian Scott got a base hit that many people may not recognize, but it was the one that kind of allowed us to make the change. And I, I don't know, you know, um, SEC games and probably tomorrow's game are games that are cutthroat and it's back and forth and it ain't over till it's over. This one wasn't over until, you know, the last out was recorded. But it, it was kind of interesting how it went down. And I, I got to be honest, I don't know the right, you know, is Jordan supposed to score on a ball to the screen there? Um, should we leave Doe in or not? You know, how do you do certain things? I think the best thing to do is just keep playing baseball. And, hey, three guys got a chance to go out there and pitch that maybe wouldn't have if the innings on offense would have went a little quicker because Doe was throwing the ball in an outstanding fashion tonight. Yeah, just what did you see from Chase that allowed him to be so magnificent tonight? You, you know, again, I, I think he's really – kind of developed within the year. You don't see that out of a lot of guys. I think he's improved since he's been on campus, but you've seen a, a, a lot of improvement, you know, within his time just during this spring. And then, you know, you want your best guys out there throwing each weekend, but maybe a little bit of a blessing uh, within that curse of getting hit on the elbow gives him some time off, gives him some perspective to sit in the bench and, and kind of watch how the game goes. And, you know, right now, fortunately, he's throwing the ball very well for us. And, you know, it's it's one guy we think we know we're going to get out of each time he's out there. Get us halfway through the game, give us a chance to win, and, and we, we like our bullpen and we like our position players, so that's a good formula for us. On the way out the door, just how pleased were you with the way the team showed up and was ready to go from the jump when you all have everything locked up at, at this point in terms of regular season things that you all can accomplish? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for all teams, you're you're in summer ball now. School School's out for almost everybody. Um, the postseason is kind of here, um, and for a lot of teams, like it started all the way back when we were in Lexington, it, it, the, the playoff you know, environment or competitiveness is kind of already set in for some teams. So you can't sit back on your heels and decide when you want to do something and when you don't want to do something. So, um, again, I, I think our guys just picked up where they left off on Tuesday as far as pregame, attitude, crispness of some things. And then, you know, you're not always going to get – you know, the scoreboard to tally up the way that it did tonight. But I think the approach is what it needs to be, and it's what it's been for the, the last few weeks. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.